Back then, I was just a girl with a pair of scissors and a dream, working in a no-name salon on the edge of town. My life was as ordinary as they come, filled with small talk, hair dye, and the buzz of hair clippers. Then, he walked in, a regular Joe needing a trim, but that haircut was about to change everything. Hey, got time for a walk-in? He asked, poking his head around the door, casual, like he was just in the neighborhood. I glanced up, meeting his gaze for the first time. Sure thing, take a seat. I motioned to the empty barber chair. He sauntered over, all easy confidence, and plopped down. I'm Tom, he said, throwing me a grin that felt like it could melt the hardest of hearts. Lydia, I replied, trying to sound cool and professional as I draped the cape over him. So, what are we doing today? Just a trim, or are you looking to shake things up? Just a trim, he chuckled, his eyes meeting mine in the mirror. Don't think I'm ready to shake up anything just yet. As I started cutting, we fell into easy conversation. Turns out, we both had a thing for old rock bands and crappy horror movies. Who would have thought, right? He had this way of talking, like he genuinely cared about what I thought. It was refreshing, made me laugh more than I had in a long time. You know, you're the first hairdresser I've met who knows more about Zombie Island Massacre than I do, he joked, as I snipped away. I scoffed, playfully nudging his shoulder. Please, that movie's a classic. Besides, it's not often I get a client who appreciates fine cinema. He laughed, that sound filling the small space between us, and I couldn't help but join in. By the time I was done with his hair, it felt like we'd known each other for years instead of minutes. There, all set, I said, brushing off the last few hairs from his neck. What do you think? He studied his reflection, running a hand through his freshly cut hair, then flashed me another one of those killer smiles. Looks great, Lydia. You've got magic hands. I felt a blush creep up my neck. Thanks, Tom. That'll be 15 bucks. He handed over the money, his fingers brushing mine for a split second. How about I take you out for a drink to say thanks? There's this dive bar around the corner, nothing fancy, but it's got character. I hesitated, not because I didn't want to go, but because it felt like stepping into uncharted territory. I don't know. Come on. He coaxed, his eyes twinkling with a mix of challenge and something softer. When was the last time you did something spontaneous? That night at the bar, Tom and I talked about everything under the sun, from our dreams to our favorite pizza toppings. Our casual dates quickly turned into something more. Nights out at the dive bar became cozy evenings in, cooking dinner together or binging on those crappy horror movies we both loved. Our banter was easy, full of laughs and those tough, no-bullshit conversations that only made us closer. Lydia, I think this is it for me. Tom declared one evening, his usual playful tone replaced by something deeper, more serious. His sincerity took my breath away. Tom, I, me too. I've never been this happy. Not long after, we decided to tie the knot. A couple of years down the line, our son, Alex, came into the world, making our small family feel complete. Watching Tom become a father was like falling in love with him all over again. Raising Alex was a wild ride, filled with laughter, late-night feeds, and learning on the fly. Tom and I, we were figuring it out as we went, leaning on each other through the sleepless nights and the baby milestones. Our little apartment was always a mess, toys everywhere, but it was our mess, our perfect little chaos. Lydia, have you seen my socks? Tom would holler from the bedroom, over the sound of Alex's giggles as I chased him around the living room. In the drawer where they always are. I'd shout back, trying not to trip over the myriad of toys strewn across the floor. Life was good, simple but good. As Alex grew, so did our family dynamic. He was this bright, curious kid with a wild imagination and an even wilder energy level. Keeping up with him was a full-time job, but Tom and I, we tag-teamed it like pros. Thirty years have passed at such a pleasantly insane pace. Then came the day Sarah walked into my salon. She was a breath of fresh air, with her easy smile and her way of making you feel like you'd been friends for years. 
As she sat in my chair, pouring her heart out about her recent breakup, I found myself genuinely caring about this girl, her story touching something in me. Men are trash, she huffed, a fire in her eyes as she recounted her tale of woe. I couldn't help but laugh, snipping away at her hair. Not all of them, surely. I got lucky with mine, but it took a few frogs to find my prince. She smiled at that, a real smile that reached her eyes. You give me hope, Lydia. It was during one of these sessions that Alex decided to drop by, something about needing to borrow money for God knows what. The moment he and Sarah met, it was like watching a live spark. They hit it off instantly, their chemistry undeniable. Mom, Sarah's cool, where'd you find her? Alex asked later, trying to sound nonchalant but failing miserably. In my chair, where else? I teased, knowing full well what was brewing between those two. Sure enough, they started dating, and it wasn't long before they were inseparable. Watching them together, it was like witnessing a whole new chapter beginning, not just for them, but for our family too. Their whirlwind romance led them down the aisle in no time, and Tom and I found ourselves welcoming Sarah into the family with open arms. Dad, I'm gonna marry her. Alex announced one day, a serious look on his face. Tom clapped him on the back, a broad smile, spreading across his face. You've got my blessing, son. Just make sure you're ready for the wild ride that is marriage. And what a ride it was. Their wedding was a simple affair, much like ours had been, but it was perfect. There was laughter, dancing, and an overwhelming sense of joy that filled the air. Welcome to the family, Sarah, I said, pulling her into a hug. You're stuck with us now, for better or worse. She laughed, hugging me back. Wouldn't have it any other way, Lydia. Our family gatherings became the highlight of our weeks, filled with good food, great company, and the inevitable stories of Alex trying to impress Sarah with his not-so-impressive cooking skills. Mom, tell Sarah about the time I made that three-course meal, Alex would say, puffing out his chest with pride. I'd exchange a knowing look with Sarah, then dive into the tale, embellishing here and there for comedic effect. Well, the fire department only had to come once, so I'd say it was a success. Everyone would burst into laughter, the sound of melody that filled our home with warmth and happiness. Life has a way of throwing curveballs, and ours came hurtling out of left field. Tom, my rock, the guy who'd been by my side through thick and thin, started acting off. It was little things at first, staying late at work, business trips that seemed to pop up out of nowhere. Tom, you're working late again? I'd ask, phone cradled between my ear and shoulder as I tried to juggle dinner prep. Yeah, babe, big project. You know how it is. His voice came through, tired, but edged with something I couldn't quite place. I did know, or at least I thought I did. But then the late night started stacking up, becoming more the rule than the exception. And the gym? Tom hadn't stepped foot in one since I'd known him, and suddenly he's all about fitness, talking about getting in shape like it was his new religion. One evening, as he laced up his sneakers, I couldn't hold back my curiosity. Since when do you care about hitting the gym? He chuckled, a sound that used to warm me, but now felt like it was skating over something colder. What, can't a guy want to look good for his wife? His words should have soothed me, but they didn't. There was a gap, between us, that words couldn't bridge anymore. Then there was Sarah, our son's wife, who'd been like a daughter to us. She was in on these family dinners, laughing and joking, yet I noticed she'd started spending more time on her phone, smiling at texts in a way that seemed, off. Who's keeping you smiling like that? I asked her one afternoon as we cleared up after lunch. Just a friend from work, you know how it is. She replied, her gaze darting away from mine a little too quickly. Yeah, I know how it is. I echoed, a sinking feeling in my stomach. Things came to a head when a friend of mine, Jenna, pulled me aside one day. We were at the market, and out of nowhere, she said. Lydia, I saw Tom at the hotel downtown, and he wasn't alone. My heart stopped. What are you talking about, Jenna? Tom's been on a business trip. She hesitated, then pulled out her phone, showing me a video. 
There he was, my Tom, arm around a woman. That alone was a gut punch, but when the woman turned her face towards the camera, the ground slipped away beneath me. It was Sarah. I felt like I was choking, the air too thick to breathe. This has to be a mistake, I whispered, more to myself than to Jenna. I wouldn't tell you if I wasn't sure, Lydia, Jenna said, her voice full of sympathy I didn't want or need. I nodded, numb, asking her to send me the video before we parted ways. When I got home, Tom was his usual self, asking about my day with that same distracted air. I looked at him, really looked at him, and saw a stranger where my husband used to be. Everything's fine. I lied smoothly, the words tasting like ash in my mouth. Just the usual day. I needed time, time to think, to plan, to figure out what the hell I was going to do. Later, alone in our room I watched the video again. And there it was, the truth I couldn't deny any longer. All of Tom's late nights, his newfound love for the gym, it all made a sickening kind of sense. I sat there, phone in hand, feeling a rage and sorrow I didn't know were possible. Tom, the man I'd spent my life with, and Sarah, who I'd welcomed into our family with open arms, had betrayed me in the most unimaginable way. The days following the revelation felt like walking through a thick fog, each step heavier than the last. But I knew I had to clear the air, for my sake and Alex's. The decision to confront Tom and Sarah together weighed on me like a ton of bricks. My hand shook as I dialed Alex's number, my heart pounding against my ribcage. Hey, Mom, what's up? Alex's voice, always so full of life, cut through the silence of the room. I took a deep breath, steadying myself. Alex, we need to talk. It's important. Can you come over? There was a brief pause, concern creeping into his tone. Sure, everything okay? We'll talk when you get here, honey, I said, trying to keep my voice even. The wait for Alex to arrive was excruciating. Tom was out, probably with her, leaving me alone with my thoughts and the damning video on my phone. When Alex finally walked through the door, his brows were furrowed in worry. Mom? You're scaring me. What's going on? He asked, closing the door behind him. I motioned for him to sit down, my hands trembling as I passed him my phone. Watch this, I said, the words barely a whisper. Alex's confusion turned to shock, then horror as the video played out. He looked up at me, his eyes searching for an explanation, any explanation that could make this nightmare make sense. Mom, please tell me this isn't real, he begged, the pain in his voice a mirror of my own. It's real, Alex. I'm so sorry, I said, my voice breaking. We sat in silence, the weight of betrayal hanging heavy between us. After what felt like an eternity, Alex spoke up, his voice hardened with resolve. We need to confront them. Together, he said, and I nodded. There was no other way forward. The dinner table was set, a macabre stage for the unraveling of our family. Tom and Sarah arrived together, oblivious to the storm they were about to walk into. Their laughter grated on my nerves, but I kept my composure. Lydia, this looks wonderful, Sarah said, taking her seat with a smile that didn't reach her eyes. I forced a smile in return, waiting for Alex to signal he was ready. He gave me a subtle nod, and I knew it was time. Tom, Sarah, we have something to show you. I said, my voice steady, despite the turmoil inside me. I played the video, watching their faces closely. Tom's expression crumbled, guilt washing over him. Sarah, on the other hand, looked defiant, even as her facade began to crack. This is nonsense. It's not what it looks like. Tom stammered, looking from me to Alex, desperate for any sign of belief. What, are you going to deny it? Even now? Alex's voice was cold, his anger palpable. Sarah finally spoke up, her voice laced with arrogance. What? Afraid of a little competition? The room went silent, the audacity of her words hanging in the air. Tom looked defeated, the reality of his actions finally dawning on him. Competition? Is that what I am to you? I asked, my heart breaking all over again. Alex stood up abruptly, his chair scraping against the floor. 
I want you out of my house, now. He directed at Sarah, his voice, leaving no room for argument. She scoffed, her delusion, seemingly boundless. We need housing. I'm entitled to half of this apartment and alimony. The room went silent for a moment, her words hanging in the air like a bad smell. Alex let out a harsh laugh, shaking his head. The apartment's mine, bought before we were married. You've got no claim to it, and forget about alimony, after what you did. The showdown with Sarah was brutal, but clear-cut. She stormed out, her threats echoing hollowly behind her. But then, Tom turned to me, his expression shifting from guilt to something harder, colder. We need to talk about our property, he said, the words heavy between us. It needs to be divided. Our home, our life together for 30 years, reduced to mere assets, to be split. The pain of his betrayal was one thing, but this cold demand was another knife twist. So, this is it? After everything, all you care about is money? I asked, struggling to keep my voice from breaking. It's only fair. We built this together, so we split it. Tom replied, his voice void of the warmth I once knew. The divorce was nothing short of a soap opera, with more drama and screaming than I'd ever experienced in my life. Courtrooms aren't exactly the place for airing family secrets, but there we were, laying it all out for the judge to see. Tom had decided to throw in his lot with Sarah, his son's ex-wife, of all people. If you'd told me a couple of years ago that my life would turn into this mess, I'd have laughed in disbelief. After the judge banged that gavel for the last time, declaring us officially divorced, Sarah had the nerve to gloat. Guess you're on your own now, huh? Kinda old to find someone decent. She sneered, thinking she'd struck a nerve. I just smiled at her, shaking my head. Honey, if Tom's your idea of a decent man, I'm better off alone. I said, walking away with my dignity intact. Let her have Tom and all the headaches that came with him. I had bigger fish to fry. With my share of the property settlement, I bought a modest apartment in a quiet part of town. It was no palace, but it was mine, a fresh start. The rest of the money went into my dream, a beauty salon of my own. The day I opened the doors to the public, I felt a mix of nerves and pride. This is it, mom. You're gonna knock him dead, Alex said, hugging me tight before the first customers walked in. And he was right. Word of mouth spread, and before I knew it, Lydia's oasis was the go-to spot in town. The online reviews raved about the place, and my heart swelled with pride every time I read a new one. Alex's life took a turn for the better, too. He met Emily, a woman as far from Sarah as the moon is from the sun. When they got married, it was a small affair, full of love and laughter, the complete opposite of his first wedding. And then came the twins, my beautiful grandbabies, filling my life with joy I didn't know was missing. Babysitting duty, mom. You up for it? Alex would ask, dropping the twins off so he and Emily could have some much-needed couple time. Bring it on. These munchkins are no match for grandma. I'd reply, gearing up for a day filled with games, giggles, and the occasional diaper disaster. Sarah's words from the courthouse echoed in my mind, and I laughed. Old and alone? Far from it. I was surrounded by love, my business was thriving, and my heart was full. I didn't just survive, I flourished. And as for Tom and Sarah, well, let's just say I wished them all the happiness they deserved. That call, it hit me like a freight train out of nowhere. Tom, of all people, with his voice oozing confidence, like he was entitled to something from me. Lydia, you know, that salon of yours. I was thinking, given how well it's doing and all, it's only fair I get a piece of it. After all, wasn't it my money that got it started? He had the audacity to claim. I felt my blood boil, but managed to keep my cool. Oh, is that so? I played along, curiosity, getting the better of me. Why don't we meet and chat about this, Tom? Say, next week? The call with Alex that followed was a whirlwind of emotion. Can you believe this, Alex? After everything, he still thinks he can squeeze more out of me. Alex was furious on my behalf. Mom, this is ridiculous. Let's dig up some dirt on him. 
a private investigator should do the trick. The week that followed was surreal. I was physically at the salon, but my mind was miles away, lost in thought and worry over what Tom was plotting. My staff and regulars could tell something was up. You all right, Lydia? You seem distracted, they'd say. Just an old ghost decided to pay a visit. I'd quip back, forcing a smile. But the anxiety gnawed at me, wondering what dirt the investigator would unearth. Finally, the report landed in my hands. The findings were a mix of the expected and the utterly shocking. Tom and Sarah's life wasn't the picture-perfect scene they had been painting. Oh, how the mighty had fallen. I couldn't help but laugh, a deep, guttural sound that surprised even me. With this in my arsenal, I was more than ready to face Tom. Walking into that bustling cafe, my stomach was in knots, but my determination was ironclad. Spotting Tom and his little family setup was like watching a bad soap opera live. He was there, grinning like a Cheshire cat, with Sarah, heavily pregnant, and this young dude introduced as her brother. Right off the bat, the scene was ripe with pretense. Tom wasted no time, launching into his spiel with gusto. Lydia, so good of you to join us. Look, we're expanding the family, he said, gesturing towards Sarah's belly, with a pride that seemed misplaced. And we got to thinking, what's better for our future than having a stake in your salon? It's booming, and Sarah here, she's got the knack. She's dreaming of her own place. I couldn't help but laugh, not a polite chuckle, but a deep, from the gut laugh. Tom, you're dreaming if you think you're entitled to any part of my salon. But, let's cut to the chase, shall we? You, my dear ex-husband, are not the father of Sarah's baby. The table went dead quiet, the air thick with tension. Tom's smile faltered, confusion etching his features. Lydia, what the hell are you talking about? I took my time, pulling out the photos, videos, and the clincher, the medical documents. This young man, I said, pointing at the so-called brother is actually your wife's lover, not her brother. And Tom, about being a dad again, remember our little chickenpox saga? The doctor was quite clear about the aftermath, infertility. Watching the color drain from Tom's face was, I admit, a guilty pleasure. Sarah's smugness evaporated, replaced by panic, while her brother looked ready to sink through the floor. Tom leaped up, rage contorting his face, turning towards the young man with fire in his eyes. You. You're dead, mate. The cafe erupted into chaos, patrons scrambling to get a better view, phones out, recording every second. Sarah was shrieking, her brother trying to defend himself, and Tom looking like he wanted to tear the world apart. I stood, my voice cutting through the mayhem. I've had enough of this circus. You three deserve each other. I didn't wait for a response, didn't look back to see the aftermath of the bomb I'd dropped. Walking out of that cafe, the air never tasted sweeter, the sun never shone brighter. After the cafe showdown, life seemed to pick up speed, barreling towards a future I was eager to meet head-on. One morning, as I unlocked the salon's door, I was greeted by the familiar faces of my staff, each one a key player in my journey to rebuilding my life. Morning, boss lady. Ready to conquer the day? Jenny, my top stylist, called out with a grin. I chuckled, flipping the sign to open. With you lot by my side? Always. The day was a whirlwind of snips and styles, laughter, and gossip, the kind of day that reminded me why I'd fallen in love with this business in the first place. As we were closing up, Alex and Emily stopped by, the twins in tow, their faces smeared with what looked suspiciously like chocolate. Grandma, look what we made at school today. One of the twins, Mia, exclaimed, holding up a drawing that was more abstract than anything. I crouched down to their level, pulling them into a hug. This is going straight on the fridge, my little artists. Alex watched us, a soft smile on his face. You're doing amazing, Mom. I'm proud of you. I stood up, ruffling the twins' hair. We're doing amazing, Alex. This family, this life, it's more than I could have asked for. That night, as I sat on my balcony, watching the sunset paint the sky in hues of orange and pink, I couldn't help but feel grateful. 
grateful for the struggles that had shaped me, for the betrayal that had tested me, and for the love that had seen me through. Tom and Sarah were now just footnotes in my story, a story that was far from over. I had chapters yet to write, adventures yet to embark on, and love yet to give. The dawn of a new day had never felt so sweet, so full of promise.